So for our second example here, uh, we're asked to use to prove a trigonometric identity, cosine of 1 half x plus sine of 1 half x over cosine of 1 half x minus sine of 1 half x is equal to secant x plus tangent x. Now that's a pretty complicated identity. It's not really obvious where to start. Um, you might want to jump into the half angle formulas because you see cosine x and si cosine 1 half x, sine of 1 half x. I'm going to say let's try to avoid the half angle formulas here if we can. Here's why. Remember that cosine of 1 half x is equal to plus or minus the square root of something or other, and so is sine of 1 half x is equal to plus or minus the square root of something or other. If we start putting those in, we're going to have plus or minuses, we'll have lots of square roots, it's going to get complicated. I'm going to try to avoid those. Instead, I have another strategy, which we've seen before in proving trigonometric identities. If you have a plus b times a minus b, remember from algebra, that's a difference of squares formula. That's a squared minus b squared. That can be really useful if you have an a plus b in, in a denominator or an a minus b in a denominator. You multiply both sides by the conjugate, by the other one, and then you get that difference of squares. So let's try that out on this one. The left-hand side, I'm going to work with the left-hand side because I see that a minus b in the denominator. So that's cosine of 1 half x plus sine of 1 half x over cosine 1 half x minus sine of 1 half x. Now I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. That means where I saw a, plus, where I saw a minus before, I'm going to multiply by the same expression with a plus in it, sine of 1 half x. And of course I have to multiply the top by the same thing, cosine 1 half x plus sine of 1 half x. And let's see where we go with that. Well, in the numerator, we actually have cosine of 1 half x plus sine of 1 half x squared. So that's cosine squared 1 half x plus 2 sine half x cosine 1 half x plus sine squared 1 half x. In the bottom, we can invoke this difference of squares formula. So we get cosine squared 1 half x minus sine squared 1 half x. Now, there's several good things that are going to happen right now, but they're all, they will only happen if you remember the double angle identities. So let me write those down for you. And I'm going to write them in terms of theta instead of x. So remember that sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And now look at what we have here. Well, there's several good things that are going to happen. First of all, cosine squared and sine squared. Those combine and those give me a 1. Now we have 2 sine of something cosine of something. And the something is 1 half x. So if you look back at our sine 2 theta, 2 sine of something cosine of something is equal to, two, is equal to sine of 2 times that thing. So we have sine of 2 times 1 half x. Now I have cosine squared of something minus sine squared of something. And I know that cosine squared of something minus sine squared of something is equal to cosine of 2 times that something. So cosine of 2 times 1 half x. You can simplify this a little bit. This is 1 plus sine of x over cosine x. And I'll split that up into 1 over cosine x plus sine x over cosine x. And those are expressions that I recognize. 1 over cosine x is secant x. Sine over cosine x is tangent x. And look, now we've got the right-hand side 
of the original trigonometric identity. That was the right-hand side right there. So that was a pretty tricky one. There were several key steps involved there. Um, the first is looking at the left-hand side and noticing that we have something minus something in the bottom. So we're going to uh, use this difference of squares formula. We're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. Once we multiply top and bottom by the conjugate, we get something that looks pretty messy, but we start invoking these identities all over the place. First of all, sine squared plus cosine squared gives you 1. Secondly, 2 sine of something, cosine of something. That's the double angle formula for sine. And then cosine squared of something minus sine squared of something. That's the double angle formula for cosine. That simplifies it down into 1 plus sine x over cosine x. Those split apart and convert easily into secant and tangent. And all of a sudden, we have the right-hand side. So you may have to experiment a bit with different uh, techniques when you're proving these trigonometric identities. The ones that I'm using for examples, these are ones I've worked out ahead of time, so I know right away which technique I'm going to use. But even when I'm working on these, I'll try multiplying a few different things together, maybe splitting things up differently, invoking different uh, half-angle formulas, double-angle formulas, and finally I find the sequence that works. So when you're asked to prove these trigonometric identities, go ahead and experiment a little. If it seems like it's getting really complicated, maybe go back and try something else. Eventually, you'll find something that converts one side of the equation into the other.